بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو دا کارپوریٹ گورننس ماڈیول اینڈ اگین وی آر موونگ اہیڈ ان آر پریویس سیشن وی بیسکلی ٹاک اباؤٹ کارپوریٹ اسکیمس اینڈ اگین دا ایشوز ریلیٹڈ ٹو اٹ اینڈ دین وائی ڈو دی اسکیمس ٹیک پلیس اینڈ ہاؤ از اٹ دیٹ ایٹ دا نوش نیشنل اینڈ ایٹ دی گلوبل لیول دی اسکیمس آر ریمپن ڈسپائٹ دا فیکٹ دیٹ وی ہیو آل دا لاز رولز ریگولیشنز اینڈ آلسو آل دی فریم ورکس ٹو انشور that these uh, scams should not take place. Now, one of the important mechanisms are the control mechanisms in corporate governance. Now, through these control mechanisms, again, the board of directors and also the regulatory bodies, they tend to ensure that any organization is doing business in the right way according to the legal frameworks and also the ethical stipulations. Now, when we talk about uh, the control mechanisms, every system of corporate governance was punctuated to a lesser or greater extent by periodic failures as well as notable successes, just like I was talking about. And problems of accountability, transparency, fairness, and openness of governance and finance have persisted widely. So uh, even though we see that all of these things, rules, regulations, and ethical values are there, but we have faced issues in accountability, in transparency, fairness, and openness of governance, and especially also in finance, uh, just like we were talking about the Enron scandal, we were talking about the Summit Bank scandal, we were talking uh, about the Bankers' Equity scandal, and also uh, the Omni Group scandal. So, so many different types of scandals taking place on a national and global level. And the control mechanisms are basically incorporated to ensure that they do not take place. Disinfection with the entrenched man managerialism of the poorly performing U.S. corporations in the 1980s led to a revival of the market for corporate governance and control. So what we see is, is that the 1980s was an era of upheavals and it was an era of uncertainty. And again, we see the stock market in doldrums and investor confidence being shattered. So therefore, there was this great need and demand for corporate control. Periodic crises has inevitably led to insistent calls for better regulation of corporate governance. So with every crisis, with every scam, with every incident, new calls are made and new frameworks are established. It is this uh, tussle, uh, it is this uh, rope of war between the good and bad, between those who want to see a better business and governance environment and those who want to exploit, who want to defraud, who want to manipulate. So again, this scenario has led uh, to the um, maturization of corporate governance as a whole. The Cadbury report in the UK in 1992 proved a watershed in the international movement to improve corporate governance, and Cadbury set out a code of best practice that was subsequently emulated by countries worldwide as a part of the stock exchange listing requirements. So we have talked about the Cadbury report in great detail and conducted multiple sessions on it. So this was uh, a watershed. This was uh, a monumental moment. Uh, in corporate governance. Central to the court basically is the division of responsibilities with independent non-executive directors responsible for the audit committee, remuneration of senior executives, the board reporting on the effectiveness of internal financial controls and verifying the business as a going concern. So what we see through the Cadbury report is, is that uh, the role of the board of directors uh, became more monumental and more proactive and more present rather than just being a, a board which was just sitting and basically signing off uh, different papers, different strategies, and different policies. So this active board actually would ensure that there would be better governance within the organization. Uh, despite the increase in extensive monitoring and disciplinary mechanism of corporate governance, all the methods available have its own limitations. The alignment of managers and shareholders' interests can be manipulated. So that is what we're talking about. And a very primary example in all of this is the Enron scandal uh, in which we see so many things just uh, basically getting shattered apart and creating that void of $43 billion, which uh, on a ripple effect had uh, a $500 billion uh, impact, uh, negative impact on the market. So that was something which was very daunting. Uh, transparency can be camouflaged and board committees unduly influenced. Uh, the crisis and a sudden collapse in the market can shatter the defenses set for the control mechanisms for corporate governance. So, so shift in the markets also uh, can create undulations and undulations which uh, later on are very difficult to track. And based upon that, again, uh, we have to see that how uh, we can 
uh, reinforce the whole context of the market and ensure that whatever mechanisms that are created, uh, whatever uh, laws, rules and regulations which are promulgated and whatever mechanisms and frameworks which are implemented, they have to be done uh, in their true essence to the uh, best possible pragmatism uh, context and also see that the texture is localized to that particular organization and that particular culture and that particular country and then furthermore create support mechanisms and realign and recalibrate the regulatory frameworks to ensure that corporations uh, cannot slide towards the negativity and lead towards corporate scams. Thank you so much.